But Lawrence is back on top in more ways than one in outdoor motocross. Though limping and obviously a bit sore, Jet showed little effect from the huge crash of the previous round. And bested his big brother with the 2 1 finish to win his second race of the season and make it 13 out of 14 on a 450 outdoors. But it is big brother Hunter that now sits on top of the point standings after winning his first 450 moto outright and coming oh so close to the overall victory, spoiled by his pesky sibling. As to the momentum supposedly gained by Chase Sexton's amazing 40th to first place charge at Hangtown, that was largely a no-show, except for the opening minutes of the second moto. After gating poorly, crashing, and carting only a sixth in the first moto, Sexton actually led, ever so briefly, the second after forcing his way from a fourth place start past both Lawrence brothers with uncharacteristic aggression. And that led to yet another crash when he tried to again force his way past the early leader, Justin Cooper. All of which does, but certainly shouldn't, completely overshadow a breakout rookie ride from Star Yamaha's Soul 450 rider who led over half of the first moto, and all but the last four laps of the second. High Point Raceway was founded in 1976 by brothers Jack and Carol Holbert on their family farm in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. The brothers invited race promoter Dave Coombs Sr. to the farm to see if he was interested in building a motocross track. And Coombs broke ground shortly after. The Mako factory team from Europe also helped design the track, and their feedback was incorporated into later renovations. The facility opened in 1977 and has hosted a round of the Pro Motocross Championship nearly every year since. This year's race will be the 47th held on the road winding above the small Pennsylvania village. High Point had hosted a race for an unparalleled 43 consecutive years until the pandemic forced its cancellation in 2020. The famed track literally straddles the Mason-Dixon line on the border of Pennsylvania and West Virginia, and its unique amphitheater setting provides views of the race course from nearly every angle, making it a favorite for fans and racers alike. In the 80s and 90s, when motocross interceded on the, on the Supercross schedule, Mount Morris traditionally was held on Memorial Day weekend, and it was an annual pilgrimage for many East Coast fans and racers. The all-night pit parties on a three-day holiday were legend. Many a couch and more than a few cars burned to the ground during late night revelry. Those were the days. Jumping over the initial 20 years of Mount Morris history for the moment, the most memorable of those Memorial Day races for many was in 1997. There are many reasons, the most prominent in the results being the mud. Track conditions were the worst ever in western Pennsylvania. Also, then in his rookie pro season, Ricky Carmichael crashed out repeatedly and carved his second to worst finish ever in the National Motocross Championship Series. 13. guy win or the luckiest guy win uh, it's going to take a combination of both you're going to have to use your head get a good start and hopefully your bike will make it and as long as you stay up you'll win. you would almost never lose a race at Mount Morris again winning on a 125 and 98 and 99 and every premier class race with perfect scores from 2002 right through his retirement in 2007. There's going to be uh, advantages there you see Carmichael trying to make sure the scores can see his number I have a feeling uh 
That's not going to stay up there very long, but he's trying. Keeping the dust down, uh, he won't have to worry about that today. <laughs> it's important to get the whole shot. It looked like Barry moved a little soon on the gate as we have Scott Sheen. We've got word that Ricky Carmichael, the points leader, in fact, he's won the first three events, taking five of the six first photos, went down. That's why we're not seeing him up near the front. The Blacks go by. Tim Ferry, while we are away, taking third place. You see him going through one of the smaller lakes on the course. Deegan moving back to the floor. Hey, son, I'm down here with Chad Watts. What happened to Ricky on the start? Uh, he got a pretty good start, and then uh, he fell right here in the first turn and got up about second from last. And he's moving pretty good, actually. He's already up in 11th, so uh, he keeps riding smart. A lot of guys are getting tired and make mistakes. And maybe we can get a top five out of this. Here's an update on Ricky Carmichael, still laboring back in 20th, and he is not standing up. Well, oh, Ryder going down right in front of him. That's one more less guy. He's got a... Oh, and Carmichael goes down. Yeah, he's working hard. We'll get through this day, get a few points, we'll be all right. Just a tough day at the office for these two guys, Chad Watts and uh, his rider, Ricky Carmichael. And he's right, just pick up as many points as you can. But the most prominent important memory for most is that it was also Honda-mounted Damon Bradshaw's final national victory of his career. Mud, mud, and more mud. Welcome back to Mount Morris, Pennsylvania for round four of AMA Motocross. Well, I'm sure Troy Lee Designs won't take credit for the artistic design, but Jeremy McGrath took the liberty to put Troy's signature on his homemade cardboard number plate. One of the many adjustments that you have to make for bad weather. That one to help out the scores, of course. On the shoulder. LaRocco having to avoid the uh, crash, and here Emig goes down at the early going. Our hole shooter is still in first. Larry Ward, number six. But look out. Here comes Ryan Hughes to the inside. Whoa, Good. Hughes having trouble getting up the hill, no traction. It's rained a little bit since the 125s. And Bradshaw. Bradshaw. And what a fan favorite he is here at Mount Morris. Off the track, Lawrence. Bradshaw gets by him, and Damon Bradshaw is now in third place. Hard to tell there if Bradshaw just, uh, or if Lawrence rather, let Bradshaw go by, or if he just blew it and tried to make it look like he was just letting Bradshaw go by. I mean, either way, it's tough to get up that hill. You know, speaking of a lot of fans for Bradshaw, that's because he's a three-time winner here. But uh, the fans have been absolutely amazing through all this bad weather. That's right. And every year, they've always been there. They've always been loud. And they've watched Damon Bradshaw come up through the ranks. They've watched him on many bikes and ride amateur races and regionals and and uh, win his first national here, and there's a lot of fans out there pulling for him. Welcome back to Mount Morris, where Ryan Hughes is our leader in moto number one. Right now, we're taking a look at the third place rider, Damon Bradshaw, number 10. Similarly, Hughes, he didn't race here last year because of injury, but he's riding well now and is very hungry. Look at that, he threw his goggles off on the top of the hill. Currently in third place, Damon Bradshaw. Let's go to Davey. Show you exactly how bad the condition is. The riders are pulling in to get goggles as the race goes on. We got tipped off. Here comes Damon Bradshaw. Pit stops are really the call of the day right now. Here comes Damon Bradshaw moving toward his mechanic slowly. Oh, well, that's smart. He wants his mechanic to hold the throttle so he can do it. Not sure what he's telling him, but boy, that's pretty quick. Damon got to put him on just like he wants. I had people put him on me before over my nose. I'm like, God, just let me do it. Ryan Hughes, oh, the brakes have gone his way, but uh, he's been in the right position to be opportunistic. Yeah, getting the, getting in the lead right away and finding your line through there and forcing everybody else to have to dodge that bruise. That's, that's the place to be. And Ryan's finally getting his chance. I mean, he knows oh. he's fast. Look at the mechanics area. Looked like it was hosed down before the moto. Yeah, they've been a team and they know that Ryan is capable of winning. It's getting pretty messy out here, folks. Mount Morris at its worst riding condition that I've ever seen it in. Normally, that would be a double jump. They would sail over that, land in the corner, maybe even do a little showing off for the fans. Now they can barely get up the hill, and the fans, like I said, they're packing the fences. Conditions aren't great for them either, but they're diehard here in Mount Morris. Ryan is on his game right now, it shows. 
pulling away from John Dowd, who I thought would be a real challenge. Well, for Ryan right here, he's not that far from the checkered flag. He's had some rough times this year, but this is his first career 250 moto win. Ryan Hughes, the checkered flag. He got a good start at Moto 1, but Larry Ward got the whole shot from the outside. Gets another good start here at Moto 2. Lusk trailing, though, and there comes Larry Ward from the outside. Ward, his second straight hole shot. We are definitely going to have ourselves a race because Bradshaw is going to give it all he's got. His fans are going to push him to it. Ryan Hughes can smell an overall, and Emick, well, he wants to get around everybody and salvage some points from that first Moto performance. Got a lot of motivation. Bradshaw coming to the inside on Emig, and he makes the pass for third place. Damon Bradshaw in third. Much to the pleasure of the crowd, a former three-time winner here at Mount Morris with the bad weather conditions. What was his strategy going in? Uh, for me, there's no strategy. Just get the best start I can and, and just, uh, you know, go as hard as I can for never how long we got to go. I don't know. If, uh, if it's going to get any worse, you know, I think it'll be better off that it'll keep raining. If it quits raining, then it's going to probably dry out a little bit and then get sticky. So I just seem to keep raining and uh, get a good start. Well, right now it's obvious Damon got his wish because it is pouring. It's not just raining. As Damon Bradshaw pursuing Ryan Hughes for second place. All this rain that's coming down, the spectators are still standing there. Look at this guy. No shirt. Took it off the way. Bradshaw. There's some fans for Damon. They are going to motivate him to get his way around Ryan Hughes. The overall is really between these two guys. Things stay the way they are. Howard took three, and here comes Damon Bradshaw. Boy, where did he get the power up that hill? Not the same place he got around Emig, and what it takes is a lot of nerve, or that other word I can't say on TV, to get <laughs> down that hill through those ruts and keep that momentum. It's coming down so hard, that'll help vision, though, a little bit, won't it? I don't know. Take I... the mud off, anyway. Yeah, but... Uh, no, it's going to make it worse. Whoa, threw his goggles off. Yeah, there you go. Why at this point the race might he shed his goggles? Because there's no way he can see. There's no way at all. Look at Here's uh, Bradshaw, number 10. What a gutsy battler he's been today. Look at the drenched shirt from behind. Our leader, still Larry Ward. It's not by much, though. Bradshaw has been gaining little by little. Damon's just on a roll. He's obviously just got used to these conditions. It's not even bothering him now. It probably reminds him of some of the days when he was an amateur or out in practice when there's not a lot of pressure. He's just out having a good time. Who wants to win the most? Our who's leader willing, paddling through. Who's willing to take the most chances? Oh, look at this. Bradshaw inches ahead. Coming down to Bradshaw gets caught up in the water. Can Larry Ward get by him? Oh, look at that. Larry Ward, a great battle with Bradshaw. Well, Bradshaw took a huge chance going through that lake. I would go through that one time and think, uh-oh, I might have just ruined the bike for the rest of the race, but you have to. So Bradshaw would be a moto win and the overall, and in front of his hometown fans, not hometown, but it seems like it anyway. He can smell this. He wants it so bad. This is the track he chose to come out of retirement to get back into Supercross motocross racing. It's always because I think the, the fans have been with him. He's a three-time winner here. His last win, incidentally, was right here at Mount Morris back in 1993. And Bradshaw makes the move on him, coming through the water. Ward still looking back to see what happened. Bradshaw could win the overall. Well, that was amazing right there. Here it is again. Larry Ward went right to the middle of that lake. They almost come together here in the air. Bradshaw decided to go way in the inside, skip all that water. First 250 win of the season of the year for Honda. On the Manchester Honda, Damon Bradshaw, number 10. Can he hold it together now? Listen to that crowd. He's got to know that's uh, pretty much all for him. These people watch him, as I said, right here so many times. If he wins here again today, this will tie him with Rick John. Damon Bradshaw is headed for his first victory since coming out of retirement. And that was back in 1993. Yeah, but it's not over yet, though. Art. They got a, another half a lap, three quarters of a lap to go. He's still got this treacherous section here. Getting by the lappers easily now. Damon Bradshaw, but really nothing's easy on this track. 
right now. They could just about push it from here and have it have it in the bag. Ducking away from the roost. He knows that checkered flag is waving. Damon Bradshaw. What a moment for these fans that have stuck it out through this monsoon. I just kept riding. I didn't know what anybody else was doing behind me, but uh, I just kept trying. I didn't have any goggles, and uh, it was rough. But man, I'm happy. What about the last lap pass on war? Well, I had, I had, I was pretty sure that it had to happen, you know, for me to win the overall. So I just, I just pushed, and it happened for me. Anything to say to this crowd? You are the man. Man, I tell you, this is the, this is the best crowd anywhere we go, man. I tell you, if it weren't for these people. Man, Obviously, Bradshaw was enormously popular with the Mount Morris faithful. Having raced there so many times on amateur days before ever even turning pro. And for years, until the track was, in my opinion, sadly reconfigured, the jump strong long front straightaway was even dubbed Bradshaw Boulevard. Before his premature and thankfully abbreviated retirement, his battles there with Jeff Stanton and John Michelle Bell were the stuff of legend. Well, here's a look at part of the huge crowd assembled at High Point Raceway, Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, for round three of the National Championship Motocross Series. And let's go to Kyle Holman, our pit reporter, who talked to a couple of the riders and a team manager earlier today. Damon, you've been out for practice. What's the track like today? Oh, it's pretty good. It's kind of one line right now. They put a lot of water on the track and plowed it pretty deep, but... Uh, some more lines starting to develop. I think after the qualifiers, the track will be good, you know, for some good races. He's about to drop on the first 250 moto of the day. There it goes, and we are underway with the race action. John michelle Bale, you had a quick shot of him. There he is around the center of the track. Rider number eight, but it's Damon Bradshaw. Bradshaw from out of the middle of that pack stole a whole shot. He came around that first corner like a freight train. Bradshaw, 18 years old, out of Charlotte, North Carolina, is the ace of uh, the Yamaha team, and uh, he figures at one point in time to garner several national championships in his career. At least that's the pick of uh, Bradshaw, and most of the folks that know motocross pretty well say this young man has all of the talent needed. They just need to harness some of that talent and put it in the right direction. Bradshaw hitting the doubles. He's putting every wheel in place. Rounding the corner right up next to the spectator. I guess they like to get that uh, dirt thrown in their face, and they're getting just that as they crowd that fence line. Bale, meanwhile, has moved to third ahead of the 1990 250cc uh, winner here at High Point. He understands this racetrack very well. He rode uh, throughout his amateur career several times here and uh, always fared extremely well. So look for Bradshaw to turn in a good, strong ride here today. Here comes Stan to challenge around the outside of the track. Now Stanton will fall back in line. He showed the wheel to Bradshaw. He just said, I want you to know I'm here, son. I'm not going anywhere. And Stanton is proud of Bradshaw all over this track. He goes to the inside. Can he make the pass? No, they come out of there side by side. And I don't know if he's going to make it or not. No, Bradshaw holds on as he's got the inside line. And Stanton still beside him. Those two have been side by side for several corners throughout this Mount Morris track. They're still together. And Bradshaw helps Stanton on. And right now, Stanton is just giving, look at that. He outbreaks Bradshaw at the bottom of that hill. Bradshaw had to get off the gas. Stanton was able to make the pass, and he's taken over the number one position. So it's Stanton out front, Bradshaw running second, and right behind him is Jean-Michel Bale. You can throw a blanket over these three riders. But right now, as this one is starting to wear down, Jeff Stanton, rider number one, has complete control over this 250 class. Right behind, though, and not giving up, Damon Bradshaw. Keep your eye on this young man. He'll try the pass when it's least expected. They go into the trees. Bradshaw looked like he had an inside line, and he did. Bradshaw, behind the trees, out of sight of our camera, made the pass on Stanton, and he regains the number one position. 
So Damon Bradshaw in the late stages of moto number one has made a move. Jean-Michel Bale is still the unknown factor. He is still parked on the rear wheel now of uh, Jeff Stanton in the number three position. Just a few corners to go for this young man out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and he'll win his first uh, moto of the season in this 250cc Outdoor National Championship class. Bradshaw, one of the premier riders on the circuit, is just 18 years old. His best years are still ahead of him, but uh, you'd never know it from watching him ride out here today. Has to look over his shoulder, takes the checkered flag with his arm pumped up in the air and says, I'm the champ, at least in moto number one in this 250 class. You're going to have to come back and catch me, if you can, in moto number two. The 250 classes were about set to start. The second 250 moto. The riders are at the gate. There it goes. And round number two of the 250 class here at Mount Morris is underway and is in spectacular. On the racetrack, a spill. And that was Jean-Michel Bale, the series points leader, who was on the ground. While Jeff Stanton is way out front. And uh, he's followed by Damon Bradshaw, the rider that won moto number one. These two riders put on quite a display of riding talent as they passed each other a couple of times in the first moto with Bale sitting back and watching. But right now the action all out in front among just two riders. Jeff Stanton who was in the lead and Damon Bradshaw in the number two position. Here goes Bradshaw to the inside. It looked like he was going to try to get the wheel underneath Stanton and make the pass in the early going. Now that wouldn't surprise me. I would expect that uh, Bradshaw would be content to follow for a while rather than getting in front of Stanton and then giving Stanton the opportunity to wear him down. But it looks like I'm wrong. Here he comes, Bradshaw beside Stanton. And Bradshaw is going to make the pass. Can he make it stick? Around the corner, a left-hander. And Bradshaw with an inside line takes over the number one spot. I am surprised. Number 11 is Damon Bradshaw. He passed uh, the early leader, Jeff Stanton, several laps ago. And since then has been able to hold on to that number one position. Now, until this last lap, Bradshaw had things pretty much his own way. Stanton was back seven, eight bike lengths, but now for an out Stanton, rather, Stanton goes to the inside. Bradshaw looked over at him, and it was it was almost like Bradshaw was giving him room in there. Bradshaw went wide in that corner. Just a few corners left, and Stanton is feeling it now. He's uh, slowed his pace just slightly. Just a second ago, he looked over his shoulder for Damon Bradshaw to see what kind of a lead he had. He knows that he can coast in now. As a matter of fact, he could probably jump off and push the bike to the checkered flag. One more corner, and there it is. Jeff Stanton takes moto number two and will be declared the day's overall winner in this 250 class. Exciting day of motocross comes to an end, round three of the National Championship Motocross Series. And, uh, I think Damon and I put on a hell of a show. We, we had a great first moto, and then he was right into the second moto. And uh, I, know I always say the strong will survive, and I believe that definitely happened today. He put, rode a, a great race, and uh, just look forward to the next one. Ricky Carmichael won his final race in Pennsylvania in 2007. The year after, the ambiance of the event changed as the date was bumped from Memorial Day to its current June slot on calendar. Ten years after RC's final Mount Morris appearance, and 20 after Damon's 1997, High Point received a major makeover in 2017 that eliminated Bradshaw Boulevard in favor of a new and revamped layout, more elevation changes, and allegedly enhanced viewing lines for the fans all around the racetrack. Last year's race may have been the very best of the lot in 2023. With Kenny Rocks coming off the catch to do what virtually no one else was able to do all summer. Match Jeff Lawrence speed. Coming in, Jet Lawrence have won every moto so far, but a different challenger today with Ken Roxon coming in to race High Point, his first pro motocross race of the year during a huge crowd. And then Lawrence catches Roxon, the battle is on late. Sadly, we won't see a repeat of that as Roxon is still healing from that spectacular shock blow out in Supercross. And it seems likely that Hunter Lawrence might be the only rider capable of consistently hanging in the wake of his little brother. Jet remains 16 points adrift in the championship, but the new red plate holder is Big Brother. For one week, we could think Sexton might battle with Jet throughout the season. 
there was little in Lakewood to demonstrate that he can. So, a slightly skewed result, but once again, everything is coming up Lawrence. And even a bruised and battered jet, simply head and shoulders above everyone else. And hey, if you like this video, please like this video. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. Meanwhile, thanks for watching this. Yeah, a little shit got me. Uh, <laughs> that was a good run.